The module we will be discussing today is on the topic research synthesis. The objectives of the module are to understand the concept of research synthesis, to highlight the importance of synthesizing research, to discuss the various methods of research synthesis and to compare the methods of research synthesis. The keywords are research synthesis, literature review, meta-analysis and research trend. Friends, as we all are aware that a single study can rarely provide a generalizable and definitive answer to a research question focused within the social sciences, especially in the discipline known as education. Results of a single study are frequently influenced by sampling characteristics such as the sample population, study setting and timing. The research environment is often difficult to control and human behavior complex to explain. In many areas, particularly education, economic constraints may restrict the scale of any single study. As a consequence, the comprehensive investigation of an area such as numeracy may require the combination of results from several research individual studies. At the same time, researches done in the field of education are scattered, piecemeal and isolated. The individual researches are like the individual reality, which is always less at par with that of the comprehensive reality. And a researcher is found struggling with questions like, is there any consistency in these various singleton study findings? Are these individual researches really converged somewhere or these remain standalone? How the contradictory results will be resolved when there are differences among the findings of various studies responding to the same research question? Can philosophical research studies be synthesized? What are the methods to synthesize research outcomes of empirical studies? To answer such questions, every researcher needs to focus on the issue of individualistic research versus the holistic research. Let us have a look towards the concept and meaning of research synthesis. As John Ralston Saul, a famous author, well said, with the past, we can see trajectories into the future, both catastrophic and creative projections. The quotation points out the relevance of the information in hand. In research synthesis, the things are done in the same manner. The term synthesis having the literal meaning as a new unified whole resulting from the combination of different ideas, influences or objects or result of combination and the process of combining different ideas, influences or objects into a new whole. The term research synthesis, research trend, research review and systematic review are used interchangeably. The terms are used differently in different areas. The literal meaning of research synthesis is the practice of collecting information and attempting to spot a pattern in the information. The Oxford Thesaurus in financial terms defines research synthesis as a comparative analysis of a company's financial ratios over time. Research synthesis tries to predict a trend like a bull market run and ride that trend until data suggest a trend reversal. Research synthesis is helpful because moving with trends and not against them will lead to profit for any investor. An aspect of technical analysis is that it tries to predict the future movement of a stock based on the past data. Research synthesis is based on the idea that what has happened in the past gives traders an idea of what will happen in the future. In project management, research synthesis is a mathematical technique that uses historical results to predict future outcome. In statistics, research synthesis often refers to techniques for extracting an underlying pattern of behavior in a time series which would otherwise be partly or nearly completely hidden by noise. 
A simple description of these techniques is trend estimation, which can be undertaken with a formal regression analysis. In recent times, research synthesis often refers to the science of studying changes in social patterns, including fashion, technology and consumer behavior. Research synthesis is using the results of several studies to derive generalizations and conclusive statements about the theoretical relationship among variables. Thus, research synthesis is a form of comparative analysis that is often employed to identify current and future movements of events or group of events. The process may involve comparing past and current status as they relate to various entities in order to project how long the current trend will continue. This type of information is extremely helpful to persons who wish to make the most from the information of the events. Research synthesis is characterized by pulling together the existing evidences which is known as discovery. Integration of research studies. A method as an area of serious inquiry and quantitative research synthesis methods to proceed independently. Now let us look to the importance of the research synthesis. Analysis followed by synthesis is an essential activity in social sciences. The reasons for this are various. It mainly emphasizes on threefold aspects. Firstly, to summarize the findings across studies, to maintain the consistency of findings and to resolve contradictory findings. Research synthesis basically deals with accumulation of knowledge, maintaining high standards in their execution according to the findings, resolving the conflicting findings to give it a new shape, characterizing the methodologies used in the field of inquiry, finding out the new methods. So here we can summarize the meaning of research synthesis as it can be defined as the conjunction of a particular set of literature review characteristics. Research synthesis attempts to integrate empirical research for the purpose of creating generalizations. Implicit in this definition is the notion that seeking generalizations also involve seeking the limits of generalizations. Also, research synthesis almost always pay attention to relevant theories, critically analyze the research they cover, try to resolve conflicts in the literature and attempt to identify central issues for future research. Now we will discuss the various methods of research synthesis. The process of research synthesis begins with identifying the category of the events that are under consideration. Once the focus is established, one looks over at the general performance for the category over the last couple of years. This helps to identify key factors that lead to the current trend of performance for the entity under consideration. By understanding how a given event reached the current level of performance, it is possible to determine if all or most of those factors are still exerting an influence. After identifying past and present factors that are maintaining a current trend in performance, one can analyze each factor and project which factors are likely to continue exerting influence on the direction of the event. Assuming that all or most of the factors will continue to exert an influence for the foreseeable future, one can make an informed decision on the future course of action. So, research synthesis is important both as a scientific activity and as the practical usability made of the conclusions which are derived from research synthesis. The process of the trend analyzing the educational research can be systematically done by using various methods such as narrative approach, systematic review which includes vote counting, combined significance test method and effect magnitude method also known as meta-analysis. Let us discuss each of them one by one. 
First is narrative approach. As the name indicates, it is a verbal description of the research studies arranged chronologically about what the researcher did in each study and the results found. It is most suitable when the number of studies on a topic is small. It provides richness of the details about the study characteristics. It allows the researchers to trace the evolution of thought because of the chronological and it can be used to synthesize two or more different lines of research that may bear only indirectly on each other. In all the methods of research synthesis, a research is required to perform three tasks. Firstly, summarizing results across studies. Secondly, assessing results across studies and finally, resolving contradictory findings across studies. In narrative approach, if we talk about summarizing results across the studies, the approach relies heavily on the statistical significance and reported results of the individual. The statistical technique portrayed for the result of research is a highly subjective matter. The subjectivity in summarizing the findings inherent in narrative approach can lead in different conclusions. Coming over to the next step that is assessing the results across studies. Narrative approach provides no significant mechanism for assessing the consistency of the results other than a verbal description. When we talk about the resolving contradictory findings across the studies, we find that in narrative approach, there is no systematic mechanism for resolving contradictory findings. This approach is always susceptible to the confusion between research criticism and research integration. Now we will see the limitations of narrative approach. The sample of studies examined in a narrative review is based on the author's whim rather than on publicly shared standards. Narrative reviews lack acceptable rules of inference for going from the findings of studies to overall generalizations about the research literature. Narrative reviews are not well suited for analyzing the impact of moderating variables. Authors of narrative reviews rarely reach clear conclusions regarding how methodological variations influence the strength of an effect. They also typically fail to report the rules they use to classify studies when looking for the effect of a moderating variable. The next method is vote counting method. Vote counting method is the most popular and is supplanted from narrative approach when there are larger number of studies. It involves categorizing the studies on the basis of direction and statistical significance. The strength of vote counting method is that once the relevant set of studies to be synthesized has been identified, the method can be quickly executed. Secondly, results of vote counting are replicable because it is less subjective. If we talk about summarizing results in vote counting method, it is a straightforward process. In the category into which the statistical results of most studies fall in described as the treatment effect or the relationship between variables. Assessing the consistency of results across studies in vote counting method assumes that there will be inconsistency in findings across studies and the objective is to identify which statistical result among the set of inconsistent findings is most prevalent. Thus, vote counting method provides no systematic mechanism for assessing the consistency of results. When we talk about resolving contradictory findings, the vote counting method does not attempt to resolve contradictory findings across the studies contradictory findings are likely to exist. The researchers have not used such approaches to resolve the contradictory findings in any consistent or systematic way. The third method is combined significance test. 
this method involves the combining of probabilities or common tests of significance statistics across several studies addressing the same research question and assessing the statistical significance of this overall values. The main importance of combined significance method is that they help to eliminate the low treatment effect of vote counting method. Rosenthal provided an excellent description of the procedures, advantages, limitations and applicability of nine combined significance tests, adding logs, adding p's, adding t's, adding z's, adding weighted z's, testing mean p, testing mean z, counting and blocking. This is highly significant method, but it does not have any mechanism explaining the variability of results across studies. Now we come over to the fourth method and which is the most important method in fact, effect magnitude method. It is also known as meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is a research synthesis that uses a quantitative measure, effect size to indicate the strength of relationship between the treatments and dependent measures of studies making up that synthesis. Glass coined the term meta-analysis to refer to the methods of research synthesis that are statistical in nature. Meta-analysis is a formal statistical method which assesses the magnitude of an effect. Glass developed this technique so that a variety of findings could be quantified, standardized and then compared across studies. The most common effect size indices used in meta-analysis are D, R and odds ratio. Although risk ratio and number needed to treat also have been used. Meta-analysis uses the effect size statistics also called as Cohen's D. It is calculated as effect size that will be equals to Xt minus Xc divided by standard deviation of C where Xt is mean of the treatment group, Xc is mean of control group and SDC is pooled standard deviation of the control group and experimental group. This pooled deviation can be calculated by a simple formula by finding out the average of the two standard deviations sigma 1 and sigma 2. Thalheimer and Koch have given a specific formula for pooled standard deviation. According to them, the pooled standard deviation can be calculated as the square root of n1 minus 1 multiplied by st square plus nc minus 1 multiplied by sc square which is completely divided by nt plus nc. In this formula, s is the pooled standard deviation, n is the number of subjects and subscripts t refers to the treatment condition and c refers to the comparison condition or control condition. This statistics provide a composite figure for treatment effect which synthesizes the general impact of the treatment across the different studies. An effect size for each of the finding in a study is computed and effect sizes are then averaged together. This allows for significance and non-significance findings to influence the total effect size equally, thus minimizing the possible influence of type 1 and type 2 errors evaluating research findings. Meta-analysis fulfills three criteria. Firstly, only studies examining the effect of a series of lesson or training treatment are included. Secondly, only those studies which are equal in a single variable are included which is done for the comparability among studies in terms of the characteristics. And finally, the third criterion for including a study in meta-analysis is a technical one. In order to be included, a study has to provide sufficient data from which an effect size can be calculated. Let us take one example to illustrate meta-analysis. Suppose the study, a study of effectiveness of modular approach for teaching science to class 9 students is taken. 
it has been replicated 10 times with similar samples with the same null hypothesis and the effectiveness has been measured in terms of the achievement and reactions of learners towards modular approach. The null hypothesis tested in these studies is supposedly there is no significant difference between the achievement scores of class 9 students taught through modular approach and that by the conventional approach. Synthesis of these researches simply require to convert each study outcome to a standard metric. This can be done in two basic ways, statistical significance and effect size. Both provide a metric free measure that allows combination across different kinds of outcomes. The kind of effect size used distinguishes the major types of meta-analysis D given by Cohen and Glass, G by Hedges, R by Rosenthal, Hunter and Schmidt and others. Synthesis across the studies provide an overall test of the common hypothesis. Two groups exposed to modular approach exhibit more achievement than exposed to traditional approach. The mean effect size gives an indication of the strength of the relation. Typically, effect size estimates are interpreted in two ways. One way is to rely on commonly accepted benchmarks that differentiate small, medium and large effects. Perhaps most well known are those benchmarks presented by Cohen in 1988 for interpreting Cohen's D, whereby 0.2 equates to a small effect, 0.5 equates to a medium effect and effects larger than 0.8 equate to large effects. The second way to interpret an effect size value is to explicitly compare the reported effect size to those reported in prior studies of similar nature. For instance, hypothetically a researcher might study the impact of a modular approach for achievement compared with that of a no treatment control condition. Let us assume that post treatment measurement of achievement indicated an effect size of D equals to 0.5, medium in size based on Cohen's benchmarks. A SEVI reader however is particularly interested in how this treatment's effect size compares to those of other treatment studies conducted earlier. As a complement to providing the effect size D equals to 0.5 and its standard interpretation medium in size, the researcher also should point out how this effect compares with those of other treatments of modular approach. It is not enough to know that one treatment is better than another. Readers of the research literature should expect authors to quantify and explain how much better. Statistical analysis common to meta-analysis is the test for homogeneity of the effect size distribution. Is the mean effect size of a particular construct representative of the population effect size? How much variability should be expected around the mean effect size? The assumption is made that if the distribution is homogeneous, then the variability around the effect size is no greater than would be expected from sampling error. However, if the variability around the mean effect size is large, effect size distribution is heterogeneous, then it appears that each effect size is not estimating a common population. To test for a homogeneous distribution, a common test used is the Dixon's Q test. If Q is statistically significant, the null hypothesis of homogeneity is rejected and the researcher assumes a heterogeneous distribution. Another statistical test that can be used to test for a homogeneous effect size distribution is the chi-square test of goodness of fit. So in this way we can find the homogeneity or heterogeneity of outcomes of the studies done on the same or similar areas earlier. Systematic review including vote counting, combined significance test and meta-analysis are more usable and preferable than narrative approach. Systematic reviews offer a more objective appraisal 
of the evidence than traditional narrative reviews. Narrative reviews are prone to bias and error, while systematic reviews attempt to minimize bias by using a methodological approach. In narrative reviews, the methods for identifying relevant data are typically not stated. Thus, study selection can be arbitrary, which means influenced by reviewer bias. Furthermore, the selected studies are generally not critically appraised. The strength of the evidence is not weighted and no quantitative synthesis of the data is performed. A more transparent and reproducible review process of systematic research synthesis might help to resolve any uncertainty when there is disagreement between the conclusions of traditional reviews, original research and expert opinion. Systematic reviews are therefore an important tool for making full use of the global investment in research. Now to sum up, we can say that a researcher's formidable task is to find the absolute truth which is philosophically utopia. Correct research synthesis can provide valuable contributions to research because they enable the digestion and assimilation of the information obtained from the high number of publications in a particular field. Further, researchers do some interpolate or extrapolate to approximate the reality as it appears to oneself. The various such researchers will find the different approximations for the same absolute reality waiting to be taken a shape of theory. As far as the empirical studies are concerned, the well-defined statistical methods are available. At the same time, the traditional narrative reflective methods also find some ground for synthesizing the research findings of qualitative studies. Although the subjectivity lies there, but still such tasks are not found suitable hands in the area of educational research. Summarizing the results of many studies as an effect size index provide important strength of relationship information. Such methods of synthesizing research can help the varied and numerous researches to reach at some convergence and conclusive thesis. Thank you.